HMS Invincible was a battle cruiser of the British Royal Navy, the lead ship of her class of three, and the first battle cruiser to be built by any country in the world. In the First World War she participated in the Battle of Heligoland Bight in a minor role as she was the oldest and slowest of the British battle cruisers present. She fired on the light cruiser Colne, but did not hit her before Colne was sunk by the battle cruiser Lion. During the Battle of the Falkland Islands, Invincible and her sister Inflexible sank the armoured cruisers Shan Horst and Eisenhower almost without loss to themselves. Despite numerous hits by the German ships, she was the flagship of the 3rd Battle Cruiser Squadron during the Battle of Jutland. The squadron had been detached from Admiral Beatty's battle cruiser fleet a few days before the battle for gunnery practice with the Grand Fleet and acted as its heavy scouting force during the battle. She was destroyed by a magazine explosion during the battle after Q. Turret was penetrated. Design General characteristics Invincible was significantly larger than her armoured cruiser predecessors of the Minotaur class. She had an overall length of 567 feet, a beam of 78.5 feet, and a draft of 30 feet a deep load. She displaced 17,250 long tons at load and 20,420 long tons a deep load, nearly 3,000 long tons more than the earlier ships. The Invincible-class ships were formerly known as armoured cruisers until 1911 when they were redesignated as battle cruisers by an Admiralty Order of 24 November 1911. Unofficially a number of designations were used until then, including cruiser battleship, dreadnought cruiser and battle cruiser. Propulsion Invincible had two paired sets of Parsons turbines, each of which was housed in a separate engine room and drove an outboard and inboard shaft. The high pressure ahead and astern turbines were coupled to the outboard shafts and the low pressure turbines to the inner shafts. A cruising turbine was also coupled to each inner shaft. These were not used often and were eventually disconnected. Her three-bladed propellers were 11 feet in diameter on the inner shafts while the outer propellers were 10 feet in diameter. The turbines were powered by 31 Yarrow water tube boilers in four boiler rooms and were designed to produce a total of 41,000 shaft horsepower, but reached nearly 46,500 shp during trials in 1908. She was designed for 25 knots, but reached 26.64 knots during trials. Invincible carried 2,997 long tons of coal, and an additional 738 long tons of fuel oil that was to be sprayed on the coal to increase its burn rate. At full fuel capacity, she could steam for 3,090 nautical miles at a speed of 10 knots. Her electrical power was provided by four 200 kW turbo generators and motor generators with capacity of 100 kW. Armament Invincible carried eight BL 12-inch MKX guns in four twin turrets. For evaluation purposes these were electrically driven BIX and BX turrets, two each built by Vickers and Armstrongs. They proved to be a failure despite two lengthy refits in 1909 and 1911 and were converted to hydraulic power during her refit in early 1914 at the cost of £151,200. The situation was so bad during her gunnery trials in October 1908 that the captain of HMS Excellent, the Royal Navy's chief gunnery school, described their operation in the following manner. When the order was given to train the turret, elevate or run a gun in or out, it was only necessary to push a button or move a switch. But the result was often a flash of blue flame which seemed to fill the turret. Her secondary armament consisted of 16 4 in QFMK3 guns. During 1915 the turret roof guns were transferred to the superstructure and the total number of guns was reduced to 12. All of the remaining guns were enclosed in casemates and given blast shields at that time to better protect the gun crews from weather and enemy. 
Action. Her anti-aircraft armament consisted of a single QF 3-inch 20 hundredweight AA gun on a high-angle MKII mount at the aft end of the superstructure that was carried between October-November 1914 and from April 1915 onwards. A three-pounder Hotchkiss gun on a high-angle MKIC mounting with a maximum elevation of 60 degrees was also mounted in November 1914. Five 18-inch submerged torpedo tubes were fitted on the Invincibles, two on each side and one in the stern. Fourteen torpedoes were carried for them. Arm of the waterline belt was six inches thick roughly between the four and aft 12-inch gun turrets but was reduced to four inches from the fore turret to the bow, but did not extend aft of the rear turret. The gun turrets and barbets were protected by seven in of armor, except for the turret roofs which used three in of Krupp non-cemented armor. The thickness of the main deck was one to two in and the lower deck armor was 1.5 minus 2.5 in. Mild steel torpedo bulkheads of 2.5 INCH thickness were fitted abreast the magazines and shell rooms. Construction The ship was built at Sir W. G. Armstrong, Whitworth & Co., Limited on Tyneside. She was laid down on 2 April 1906 and launched at 3 p.m. on 13 April 1907 by Lady Allendale. On 28 December 1907, while still fitting out, she was hit by the Collier Odin, which resulted in the buckling the beams and frames in the hull and five bottom plates being stove in. She was officially completed on 16 March 1909. On 18 March, she sailed from the Tyne to Portsmouth, where she would be commissioned. On the way, she collided with the brigantine Mary Ann, and stood by until the lifeboat John Birch arrived from Yarmouth to take the brigantine in tow. Early career She was commissioned into the first cruiser squadron of the home fleet on 20 March 1909 and participated in fleet maneuvers in April and June 1909. The Spithead Review on 12 June 1909, and the Fleet Review off South End on 2 July. She was refitted between 17 August and 17 January 1910 in an attempt to cure the electrical problems with her turrets, but they were still unsatisfactory. Another attempt was made to bring her turrets to working order during a refit in the spring of 1911. But this too was unsuccessful and the decision was made the following year to convert her turrets to hydraulic power. This was delayed until after her deployment to join the Mediterranean fleet at the end of 1912. On 17 March 1913, she collided with the submarine HMS C-34, but the collision was ruled the fault of the submarine. She returned to the UK in December 1913 in preparation for a major refit that would finally give her turrets hydraulic power and make her battle-worthy. Her refit at Portsmouth Dockyard began in March 1914 and was interrupted by the declaration of war on Germany on 4 August. She'd been formally recommissioned the day prior, but the turret work required another week to complete. Invincible was the first battlecruiser to be fitted with a new fire control director, but this could not be completed in the allotted time and would remain inoperable until she was refitted after the Battle of the Falkland Islands. She was declared operational on 12 August, when Rear Admiral Sir Archibald Gordon Moore, commanding the 2nd Battlecruiser Squadron, hoisted his flag in her. He was ordered to the Humber, along with the battlecruiser HMS New Zealand, where he could better support the British ships patrolling the Broad Fourteens.